Well, hello. It's been a while since I've done a video with my face on it. So, I just bought a new toy. I figured I'd jump on, have a video with my face on it, and unbox it and get it set up. Um, I did some videos with some 3D printers in the past, so uh, this is kind of kind of go on that trend there. So, somebody talked me into trying out the Bamboo Lab. So I opted to go with the, the P1S series, which is one of the newer ones, or is the newer one. So they have the X1 Carbon, which is their top of the line, and they have the P1S, which is middle of the road, then they have the P1P, which is kind of their budget one for right now until hmm, September 20th, and we'll see what happens on September 20th. Now, I got this one with the AMS, or the Automated Material System, because I wanted to play with cool toys, and if I was spending the money, I might as well spend a couple extra hundred. Uh, I did buy this myself. It cost about 1100 and that was with getting, I think, four other rolls of filament. So this one is, the, is enclosed. Um, one of the biggest differences from, or the two biggest differences from the X1C is it doesn't have the big 5 inch touch screen on it and it does not have the LiDAR in it. So, um, I'm going to move this to the floor. I'm going to sit and go over some of the specs. They're all on the website, but I'll mention them here. And then we'll get to opening it up. Got my tools, got my notepad. Now really quick, just some of the specs. Um, I took them down from the website just so you can go to the website and take a peek. But this build plate is 256 millimeters by 256 by 256. Um, that is bigger than my either of my any cubics. It is bigger by 56 millimeters than my Ender 3 and smaller by about 44 millimeters than my Ender 3 Max. It does come with an all metal hot end, yay for that. This one comes with a stainless steel nozzle but they do have a hardened steel nozzle option also. This comes with a 0.4 millimeter standard nozzle but they do have 0 0.6, 0 0.2 and 0.8 millimeter nozzles as options. Build plates, it has textured PEI, it has the cool plate, it has the engineering plate, and, and the high temp plate. And just a real quick Google search today, I found uh, Fulament, well, Fulament only really has one for the X1 series, which is discontinued, but I would bet that would fit. And then Wham Bam has a build plate. I'm sure there are others out there. I do believe I got the textured PEI one, which is Old. We'll find out when I open it. Um, the max temp the plate can get to is 100 degrees Celsius. The max tool head speed is 500 millimeters per second. We'll see how well that works for functional stuff. I know they say that it can do the benchy in 18 minutes. Well, that's a benchy. Is it going to do my other things in 18 minutes that I'm looking for that I do with my Christmas lights and stuff? So. Max acceleration is 20 meters per second. It does have a control board fan, a chamber temp fan, and an auxiliary part cooling fan. It does have an activated carbon air filter, so that'll be good because I'm going to start trying out some ABS just for fun. Uh, the ideal materials that it does is PLA, PETG, TPU, PVA, PET, ABS, and ASA. So I'll be trying PLA. PET G and ABS on it this round. Eventually I think I want to get in and try TPU. It is capable of PA and PC, but they do not have that on the ideal list, so keep that in mind. It does have a 1280 by 720 camera inside, built in with time lapse capability. And maybe in another video I'll go through the apps and stuff with it. It does have a filament runout sensor. It runs on 120 or 240 for voltage. 
And with the AMS, it can print up to 16 colors, but printing 16 colors would mean you need four, four ABSs. I got one, so I can do up to four colors. So, we'll get rid of that. Don't need that anymore. Got a knife. I don't know if we're going to need the tools, but let's start digging in. I have to say, it's packaged very nicely. Nice handles on the package, so it was pretty easy to move. There is no damage whatsoever to it, and it took about a week to ship. And UPS got here about an hour ago. I see here they actually tape part of the bag up. It appears that you would be using the bag as kind of the handle to pull this out. Now, just going over some of the packing that's in here already. We have some nice air packing, which I think I'll keep for uh, shipping out seasonings. It does have some styrofoam. I'd throw it on the floor, but I just vacuumed, so. More styrofoam in each corner. So, so far it's packed very nicely. Now we'll get that on the table, we'll set that off to the side because I know there's some accessories, so we'll go over the, over the accessories here first. Not too bad on weight to pick up like this. And there's the machine itself, so I'll let you guys just sit in anticipation. Sit there and look at it. We'll get to it in a minute. So, we have more of that really nice packing foam or air bubbles. Really nice stuff. They did put a lot of care into the packing. There's more styrofoam down here, but we're going to leave some of that in here. So, this is PLA Basic. Um, I'm colorblind, but I think it's green. I don't know, I'll open it up later, you guys tell me what color it is. It's got support for PLA. And more PLA Basic, which appears to be in green. Now, each one of these almost appears to be about a quarter roll. You know, it would have been kind of neat if they'd have just put this on one roll, made it a half roll, or just given you one full roll. Um, less plastic you have to deal with, but I suppose these are reusable, so they might be handy to have. You can print out spools too for this thing. So let's get some of the garbage out of the way. I'm interested to try this support PLA material, and this feels to be about a quarter spool too. And this is obviously all Bamboo Lab stuff, so it does have the RFID on it, so the machine will know what you have loaded up. And we'll set that off to the side. Kick that away, and let's get into the exciting part. Again, this is what this is how the bag came. So this, these were good handles to lift it up and. They got a good bag on there that's nice and sturdy, so. But now we're about to make it unsturdy. I think my knife's getting dull. If you guys have a good knife for stuff like this, let me know in the comments. All right, so right away on top, we've got a quick start guide. We'll actually use this today. bag out of here and out of the way. It is very well taped up. So I'm going to sit back down over here. We'll get some of this tape off. We'll just kind of work on the unpacking part of it. <clears throat> and I'm sure the favorite part for some people is about to come up. just stop right there and now we'll get to the satisfying stuff 
the peel. Oh wait, it's in a bag, there is no peel, sorry. Camera turned off there for some reason. All right, so we got the front door uncovered. It's a nice magnet on there, so it closes very nicely, very securely. Uh, the machine isn't quite as big as what I imagined it, which isn't a bad thing at this point. So, <coughs> on the inside, we got a bunch more stuff packed in. So let's work on getting that out. Nicely packed with plenty of styrofoam, so it's very safe in here. They did a great job packaging this. It's very secure. First thing we have here is a box of goodies. So let's just go through this before we get the really big stuff out. All right, first thing we have here in the box is Bamboo Lab glue stick. I have never used a glue stick before, but we will be trying it. Uh, well, the very important part, the power cable. I believe this is the cable for the, to connect the AMS. Uh, spool holder for the rear, so everything that I've read and everything that I've heard TPU, you don't want to use an AMS system, so that would go on a back spool. Or if you had a spool, an extra spool you wanted to use, but your AMS was full, you can just put the spool on back. I do have, I found on printables, um, a file to make a splitter in there so you can actually have the five different filaments, so we'll probably be doing that. Um, looks like a warranty, uh, disclaimer and safety guide. Safety. Not saying I'm not safe, but here we have the touch screen. And we have tools. Let me get that out of here. Looks like we have a nozzle cleaner. We have a couple of Allen wrenches, you know, the cheap Chinese ones that every printer comes in, so I've got a box full of them. But this is why I brought my tool kit. So, we're just going to dump those. And the box is empty, so we're going to dump it. we got a little bag of spare supplies in here. So we've got two finger majigs. Look like rollers or some sort of cleaner. Um, I'll have, I'll go over, I'll have this stuff laid out and I'll get close ups and I'll have it labeled or I'll go into what it is. That's 3M printed phone holder. Lubricant grease, so I've got one, two, three, four, Five lubricant grease, grease lubricant, scraper parts, hot end clip and screws, looks like two cutters, uh, more extruder screws, and we have some thermal grease. Now I thought I had seen that this came with a spare extruder, but I guess in this case it doesn't. It comes with some parts for it. So we'll get this stuff back in the bag and at the end we'll kind of, we'll get a good picture of it. Or some good footage of it. Stuff, 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 stuff. All right, now there is one large item left in here. When they ship it to save space and some shipping, they ship it with the AMS inside. So we're going to take out a little bit more styrofoam. Oh, wait, there's a little more, but. Hmm. 
What am I? Oh, it has got locks down on the bottom to unlock or actually unscrew to get the AMS out. So it is really locked in there nice and tight, which that's kind of cool. And if you don't have one of these iFixit tool cases, I highly recommend. It is very, very nice to have. Of course, I picked too big a one. It's got every little tool you could possibly use. It's got a really nice case to it, really strong. I'll leave a link to it down in the bottom, an affiliate link. So let's get the screw out of here. And I think we'll toss that on the floor and just leave it there. Not where it was going to go, but... And it is magnetic. And I do believe I saw a storage, um, a hexagonal storage system for it. All right, now let's try and get this thing out again. To that, we have an AMS out. So I'm going to set the AMS off to the side. There's still some stuff to deal with in here. So there's some more styrofoam hiding in here. And it appears I have some more screws to take out. And that's what the AMS came sitting on. So if you'll notice, we do have the red little arrows, and I'll zoom in on these later, but they tell you right where the screws are. I got us an extension cord because the camera stopped recording again. And our power cable. Getting that nice and ready. So now it would be time to read the instructions. So let's open up our quick start guide and see what's going on. Do not, all right, right here, right away, it's got, don't use TPU in it, in the AMS. Don't use PVA and don't use cardboard spools in the AMS. All right, let's get the AMS plugged in. Oh, we have the nice peel here. just so you guys can see. I have a bad habit of usually not taking these off because I keep thinking that it's just more protection, but... We're finally getting our peels. And one more to do over here. All right, we'll get that turned around and we'll come work at it from the other angle, from the other side. So if you remember, I mentioned that uh, the cable for the AMS. So I've got two different cables and if we take a look, you can't put them in the wrong spots. They're totally different cables. So. All right, this can plug into either one of the interfaces up here, and this is the six-prong one. And we plug it in right back here. Sorry, I'm getting in the way of the camera, but... Now, one of the downsides about back here is, you'll notice... 
used to have a little clip on them to hold them in place. That little clip on here faces the printer, so I can't get this out without a tool. Bad engineering there, not, not a good thing. All right, so that's one cable plugged in. And then there's one cable that goes from the side over here, and this is the four prong one, over into here. And I'm gonna put the right angle one over here. Because this, this cable has a straight through and then a right angle one. And again, it's looking like the clip that holds it in place is going to be fixed facing the printer. And it is. Last thing we have to do is get our PTFE tube and shove it in here. Doesn't go in very far, but here's another flaw. The connector for the tube is buried down inside of here. I can't press on it to pull this tube out right now. There is a tool that we can print to do this, so we'll get that printed and maybe one of the first prints. All right, printer binding. God, I wish I had glasses. Download the handy app, register and log into my Bamboo account. Ta-da, we're in. All right, connect the printer to power. Let's do the power thing now. We'll kind of get this over here. Use Bamboo Handy to scan the QR code on the screen and bind your printer to the Bamboo account. Before use, please make sure that you have read the user. Okay, we are reading it. Next, all right, I'm going to tell them I am in North America, so I have to select my region. Scan the QR code to configure Wi-Fi and user account. So, scan QR code. The scan QR code is right in the app, so. QR code scanned. Would you like to bind the printer? And it is binding now. Waiting. Waiting. Now, I am going to move this over and move the camera into place and we're going to start the self-test. I am not sure how long this is going to take. And that was really quick and painless. Took about five minutes, maybe a little less. All right, while we do this right away, I noticed that we have a new firmware, so we're gonna update the firmware. And let that go. Now, I think the way I'm gonna run it, I'm probably gonna use the support PLA quite a bit down the road, but I think I'm gonna keep that on my right hand side. That upgrade is going pretty quick, so cut this off and I'm just going to wait till it's done. All right, 66% already, not too bad. Now it's gonna hang there and make me look like a fool. There it goes, 81%, 82.
98, we're almost there. Come on, come on, little printer. My dog is sitting over there wondering who I am talking to. She is looking at me like I'm crazy. All right. All right, we're back ready to print. So now I'm gonna pop this in. And apparently there's a button I gotta press here. Oop, and it just grabs it. Boy, does it ever just grab it. Oh. That's a little loud. I mean, not unmanageable, but it's... Alright, we'll get our first and second greens in, so... Oops. I think I see the little RFID chip hidden right down here, so if you get one of these spools... It looks like it's right under the Bamboo Lab label. Now the question is, where does it read it? And we'll get our other green in. Mine as well, huh? You don't even have to push it that far. There's a little button to push in. Then it's just, you stick it in maybe a quarter of an inch and it just grabs it. So we'll close this up. And I am going to move and I'm going to do a benchy. And I'll do the time lapse video of it. All right, so hey, I'm back. Um, actually it's a couple weeks later. I filmed this video and it was, well, really blurry. Had to do it again. So here we are. So now I've had the printer and I've been able to use it for longer than what I expected for making this video. And I'm overall, I'm overall, I'm impressed. I've had some issues. Most of them were probably on me, but I'll just go over them really quick. I've had a few failed prints. You know, we got strings and I got some blobs, and this one was actually a catastrophic failure that I had to change out the hot end for. Trying to fix it, I broke a wire. By the way, really easy process to do that. One of the failures I had is I had the wrong bed setting in Orca Slicer. I use Orca, not bamboo, but I have tried everything in bamboo too. Uh, a few times I had issues with uh, the spool and the AMS. It just wasn't wasn't loading right. Uh, that's since gone away. I've been using the machine pretty much 24 seven. Right away, and I knew this going into it, I had heard about it, but right away with the cover on, I couldn't print. Uh, the cover was kind of pressing down on the Bowden tube. The filament wasn't making it in there, so I did have to make the little arm to keep the Bowden tube up. Wasn't too big of a deal. I knew it was coming. Uh, I empty spools. Now the spools kind of, they twist on, so there's two separate parts. They twist on and you can put refills on them. A couple of times I've had it where in the AMS that's come apart. And, well, I made the mistake the first time of taking it out and trying to fix it and that didn't work. So I was going to try to re-reel it and that was an even bigger deal. So I ended up getting it fixed, but I have learned that if it's it doesn't hurt it in there. So as long as I don't take it out, I don't have a problem. It still prints fine. Uh, one thing I hope that comes in as a feature in the future is, feature in the future, the SD card, you cannot access it from the slicer at this time. It's just not a feature available. That would be really nice if we could get access to that, get the files off of it, you know, the camera files, but it's not a big deal. Um, as you can hear, maybe you can hear, I don't know, the printer is running right now. This isn't as quiet as those enders. You know, I can sit here at night with the enders running on, watch some TV and not be bothered. You can barely hear them. This one you can hear. When it's doing its calibration and setup, it's a little bit louder. It's got a little bit of clunking around as it moves. It isn't a deal breaker. I mean, I can still sit here and watch TV. Would I want it in my bedroom? No, probably not. 
Uh, I'm sure in the future that'll change and they'll do better with that. But this is, that's definitely not a deal breaker. Um, some things that I've been loving about this machine. Um, it works flawlessly. I mean, it was, I set it up and probably, well, because I was doing a video, it might have taken 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. It went together quick. Uh, another 10 to 12 minutes for the calibration and I was off to the races printing. I mean, I had my Benchy here printed out within the first hour. Um, it was a breeze to set up an Orca. Basically, you select it and it's set up. Uh, I did try it in Bamboo Studio and it was a breeze to set up there. Uh, the learning curve, there is no real learning curve to it. I mean, if you can move the files in and out, you can print. Um, when you start to get into more complicated prints, there's going to be learning curves, and I'm going to try doing some of those. Uh, Multicolor prints, they take longer, but they're a breeze to do. So a beginner, even a child, could probably operate this machine. Uh, I did like the fact, and I was surprised, because I had heard that this wasn't true, it came with an SD card. That was awesome. And I found out, because I was trying to push my own SD card in a slot, it wasn't going in. There was one in there. Uh, as I said, beginner friendly, the generic settings, oh, petchy, petchy. I tried for weeks and working with several different people on those Ender printers, I could not get Petchy to print for anything. The any cubics, it worked fine. This one, generic settings, I had Overture Petchy in there. Printed it, no problem, generic settings look good. I actually printed some paint can holders and they're perfect. So that is a huge bonus because a lot of the stuff that I print to use is for outside for the light show. Dimensional accuracy is great. Haven't had any issues with any of that so far. I do have some Legos that are a little off, but I mean, they still kind of hold together. Um, this is going to take some tweaking, but I think that's more in the model itself. I haven't read the instructions yet. I will be after this. Um, this is fast. There isn't any tweaks you have to make to make it fast. It's just the generic settings. It prints nice and fast. Uh, it runs 24-7. I've printed a ton since I've had it. I have printed off a bunch of these honeycomb things for the honeycomb storage system. I've already got one set up. Um, Vallejo paint can holders. I have the start here to a tablet holder. You know, I printed the poop shoot thinger. I printed a scraper, which has gotten a lot of use and probably should get reprinted, maybe an ABS this time. Um, printing some Gridfinity stuff. So it's been great. I mean, it's, I wish I'd have started with this printer. Um, I might sell those and get one of the new, that, the, either the P1P or the new A1. I know the A1's a bit smaller, but I, I kind of get, I have kind of changed direction on the large prints that I wanted for the light show. So it might make more sense for me if I get another one to get another bamboo. Changing it, changing parts was a breeze. So. I had the issue, I messed up the hot end. It was two screws take out to take out, and it was three connectors, and they're all right there. Um, buying the parts was easy, it took four days. I mean, I, I wish I'd had it faster because I wanted to play with the printer. Um, everything's right up there. Again, a child could probably do it. Uh, popped it in there, ran the calibration again, back to printing. Uh, on the enders, you know, you mess up the wire on there and you gotta, you gotta turn it over, take all the bottom off and go into the main board and it's probably an hour long process uh, for my skill level. Off of this thing, it was probably a 10 minute process, it was done. Um, and the parts for it are actually a lot cheaper than some of the parts there and I upgraded to uh, hardened steel hot ends. So I bought the full kit with the fan there for 30 bucks, 34 bucks, and I bought a spare just hot end for 14 bucks. Hot hardened nozzle. So, so far everything's been fine. I haven't had to clean it yet. That's coming. Uh, I'm just printing, printing, printing. 
that's all I have for this video. I mean, I love the printer. I would highly recommend it if you're looking to get into 3D printing and you have the money to spend. This is a great way to get into it. It's foolproof. Um, enders, you got to tinker with them, but they're only 150, 300 bucks. This one is ready to go right out of the box, but it's thousand dollars. You can get the nice quality and everything off of the enders. You got to do the tinkering. You got to have the patience. I just I didn't like that I was spending a lot more time tinkering than printing. This one I'm spending more time printing than tinkering. With that said, uh, that's all I got to say about the printer. I'll probably come along and do a review, review later. It's still got to go to its permanent home. Um, it is lighting season. I got the, the Halloween light show is pretty much done. So I'll be taking some videos probably this weekend and getting them posted. And then I'll be working on a Christmas show. I'll probably have some light show videos. I might do one yet this week. And barbecue, I might have a couple. I might get uh, a griddle. So if I get a griddle, we'll have a review video for that. I might throw in some woodworking videos because the shop is in full swing. Um, we are doing a lot of flags out there. We've got 20 some orders right now. So I might do a video, my video of how to make a flag. I mean, everybody else on YouTube does it. Why not throw my hat in the ring? Uh, if this video was at all useful for you, throw me a like, subscribe to see more videos. I can use the subscribers. I'm trying, I'm doing this all alone, so it's a little difficult to get videos out. But I'm trying to get videos out as soon as I can with everything else going on. Um, if you want to see a certain video, you want to see something, if you want to know how to do something or whatever, throw a message down in the comments below what you'd like to see, what I could do more videos of. I know I'm kind of scatterbrained at times with my videos. There's a lot of things going on, but this channel is Wood Technology and Barbecue. I mean, I use the technology in the wood. I use the technology on the show, and actually I use the technology for barbecue, but basically I just like to eat barbecue. Uh, take care. Hope you enjoyed the video, and have a wonderful week and a great weekend. Thank you.